Welcome. I'm Alfred Weber. And uh, once again, we have the great honor and privilege of having as a guest Tolik, uh, who is appearing again for listeners who are just joining us. Um, he, he's appearing off camera because Tolik is a 20-year professional in the computer industry, in administration and management and in marketing. And he is bringing this information to us. And he still has a day job in the IT industry, uh, which is just kind of catching up in some ways in terms of the consciousness in the industry to the explicit discussions of his role as an earthly human representative of a reported galactic governance council known as the Andromeda Council, which is composed of star systems, including a uh, representative from the Galactic Federation of our own planet. Welcome, Tolik. Alfred, good afternoon. Good to uh, good to catch up with you again. Thanks. By the way, you, you've you've mentioned a couple times that it's an honor and privilege to have me on. I, I would I would like to say um, I appreciate the opportunity to share with you and share with anybody that's listening or anybody that reads the transcript all of this information that I've been given. It's um. It can be a daunting responsibility sometimes, but I think more importantly for me, it's a privilege. And I kind of feel like if I'm learning this information, then everybody else has the right to know it as well because you know, we, have a, we have a solar system, we have a planet, we're obviously going through some kind of evolution and some kind of transformation. And I think as a, a responsible part of the human race, whatever I can do to help that, that, that's why I'm here. That's, I guess that's the bottom line. I'm here to help as much as I can. Excellent. Uh, well, you know, just for those who are joining us just now or would want a refresher, could you take just a couple of minutes? We left off in the last time that you were with us on Exopolitics TV. Uh, the process of transformation through dimensional shift that you stated was in a period uh, from uh, mid-October 2011 through the end of 2013. Could you just take a couple of minutes to go over the, the highlights of what you stated there in, in just a few sentences? Sure, certainly. Uh, the time frame that you've repeated is this sorry? Is the same time frame that I've been given, uh, mid to late October of 2011, uh, through the end of 2013, and essentially, we're supposed to, uh, if you will, as a metaphor, wake up in 2014, and not only planet Earth, but the whole solar system is supposed to be vibrating at a fourth dimensional frequency rate. That's the first thing. Uh, before that whole process begins, there are some people that are, uh, are from, from planets that are part of the Andromeda Council. People from the planet Ventra, the planet Nikote, planet Toleka, and planet Retol, uh, of, and they're all human, of different heights uh, and, and colors um, that are going to be coming to visit Earth uh, very quietly and will uh, introduce themselves and visit with the people on Earth as a way to accomplish a few things. One is to simply let us let us know that we're not alone, never been alone. They've go they're going to uh, share with us what they know about the galactic history of Earth, um, the true origins of, of human beings, as well as the true or origin of the human spirit or the human soul. And um, they've also spent some time telling me about um, what it will be like to become a fourth dimensional human. And that, that transition initially begins with us going from a body 
that is opaque and carbon-based and very dense to a body that is much lighter, vibrates at a faster, higher, if you will, frequency, but is different in that our body's molecular and cellular structure will change. In the future, and in a 4D vibratory realm, dimension, um, our bodies will be based on crystalline molecules. That's that's how we're going to be different. And I think that's pretty much where we left off. Right. Now, what what we'd like to cover in this in this segment is what you've called, and I would like to call the, the facts of life. You know, really getting down to nitty gritty. Uh, you know what we eat. Do we have sex? <laughs> that's what people want to know. Uh, mm -hmm. How do how do we reproduce? So I I have a whole series of questions, and um, we only have an, a little less than one hour now for this. So these are going to be kind of as much information as you get out, but they'll be brief, and I'll keep the pace kind of going. But let's start out with some of the basics. We're now in 4D, right? Let, let's assume that that is past January or whatever the date is, and we're now in 4D as 4D humans. What kind of food do we eat as 4D okay. humans? Uh, good question. Um, first of all, 4D adults, fourth dimensional human adults, will not need to eat food. Um, our bodies can produce enough self-sustaining energy on our own. Um, food can be eaten to simply enjoy food, um, most of which uh, I understand will be, will be fruit that has as an integral part of its molecular makeup uh, a digestible protein. And from, from what the Andromedas have told me, uh, this kind of fruit is eaten on many, many worlds. Well, you know, now um, uh, I come from a family, and, and including my, my wife, that are kind of foodies. So there are, there are all these restaurants, you know, when you're a foodie and you watch the Food Channel. So I, I guess, is there no room for gourmet restaurants in in the, I, I guess there are other things that will take its place, right? Yeah, well, as a matter of fact, um, one, two, three, with, with one, two, three, four, four of them, just a couple nights ago, we were having a conversation about earth foods, and I was talking to them about some fun foods that they would enjoy. Mm -hmm. So I described pizza and showed them some different varieties of pizza, and I said, one of the reasons the pizza is fun is because after it's cooked, you cut it in pieces, you actually pick it up with your hands. You can, yeah. you know, as compared to, you know, a fork and a knife and you have yeah. protein. But, and they said, hmm, pizza. So I gave them a description. I gave them visual images. I gave them some, uh, uh, you know, our oh, own ingredients. Oh, so them are people in the Andromeda Council that, that, that you were talking to. Yes, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, was, good. Yeah, I, right. I, yeah, I, I, was, yeah, I was talking to... I, I didn't yeah. know if you were having a conversation with friends or, or with your representatives. No, I was talk, talk, yeah, I was talking to my Andromeda Council contacts. Uh, there were at least three or four of them that were all were talking at once. And they said, uh, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, we're going to try this. So I uh, talked to them again last night, and I said, all right, so what do you think? <laughs> and they're actually the, their elder, the spiritual leader, said... He's like, this is good. He said, now you're going you're gonna to get a kick out of this. He said, um, I didn't know how to cut it. You know, he's like, I'm sitting there trying to tear it apart. Mm. And I'm thinking, man, what a dummy. I never thought to tell him, you need a pizza cutter, a roller. to oh. <laughs> Cut this pizza. <laughs> so I visually showed him the concept of a pizza cutter. He's like, now you tell me. So I see. But um, they loved it. And, you know, what, what they did was... They took their own. Uh, um, they have they have on board the biosphere yeah. a, a number of a number of food replicators. Okay. So they talked to the people in engineering. They talked to people who prepare the different menus for the food replicators, yeah. and they gave they gave them this 
recipe for pizza. So they substituted some of their own, if you will, ingredients yeah. to, come, to come up with cheese. They have their own version okay. of a tomato. They have their own version of fruits. Like I gave them, I okay. happen to like pineapple pizza. So they, they threw on their own version of what is pineapple fruit, and he loved it. Oh, they, they, they just yeah he loved it he thought pizza was the greatest thing going so um, yeah with yeah. that with that as a segue we're going to be able to replicate all sorts of food well, it's just that's that, yeah and, and and I can see that that one could have a restaurant as kind of a fun night out where you replicate all of these foods I mean you know uh, absolutely. just to have that that kind of sensual activity and kind of sensual gratification. Now, oh, absolutely. Talking yeah. about sensual sensual gratification, some people really get a kick out of sleeping and some people just are up all night. What about sleep in 4D? Um, as a fourth dimensional human, which most of them on the biosphere are, you know, there are there are others from the fifth and the sixth, but the folks I'm talking to are primarily fourth dimensional. They'll say um, you'll need a, you're going to need about three hours of sleep max. It, it will be a very deep and normal sleep, but you're only going to need about three hours to recharge this um, crystalline-based, molecular-based body. It's a different body; it has a different way of functioning. So, only three hours. As a, as a standard night's sleep. Right. So this is going to be a whole new calibration of kind of sleep and waking and a whole new use of time in one's life. I mean, now there's kind of a standard eight hours at which people are assumed to check out and nothing much happens. Uh publicly, but it looks like there's going to be a lot of more public activity. I mean, if you only need three hours sleep. Uh, yeah, I would say we're going to be a lot busier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, with all these changes, does everybody adjust to lot new lives uh, in 4D as Earth humans? Or are some more challenged by others, and what happens with those who are who are challenged more? Yeah, you know, it's a, you know, it it, it really is a question that that bears asking because, you know, we're all different. Every one of us that that pop into this planet, um, you know, we're all different. Some people move at a faster pace, some people move at a slower pace, some people. Um, absorb information and they have uh, almost photographic memory. There are a few people like that. Most of us, we've got to grind through work. We have to take a lot of notes. We're, we're all different. So because we're all different and we all learn at a different level, for those families or for those individuals who are having a more difficult time adjusting, there are going to be sponsor families and sponsor individuals on board the primary Andromeda Council Basser, as well as the others that are around here in Earth space. And they will provide sponsorship help, uh, assistance if you will, um, okay. to help to help families more easily adjust, to help individuals, and to help children more easily adjust. They're, they're just going to be there as, as a helpful resource for whenever any of us need it. Now, when you mention children, the whole subject of babies, uh, toddlers, six-month-old toddlers, one, two, three years old, uh, how do children uh, and women in pregnancy go through, in terms of the fetus, go through this pr process of transformation uh, via dimensional shift? Uh, are they going to remain as babies, six months old, three year olds, uh, or is something else going to happen? In terms of what you've been told by the Andromeda Council, right, right, and you're, yeah, thank you for pointing out this. Everything that I share with you, uh, none of this is my information. This is what they've told me after I 
<laughs> put them through a rigorous set of questions. So I can't tell you what they told me. Um, um, young children, young babies, uh, six months old, one, two, three, four, five, six years old. As the as this whole planet transitions and transforms from being third dimensional to fourth dimensional, all of these children will continue to be children. And they will continue to grow and evolve normally as children. And that's they're just going to do that. It'll be a normal evolution for them. You know, there'll be a period where they start becoming adults, and then they'll normalize into, if you will, 4D life. You know, that that 4D expression that's eight or ten thousand years long. But yeah, I mean, we we yeah. we, we talked about, uh, uh, or at least you talked about, uh, uh, the 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 4D lifespan being. Five thousand right. to ten thousand years. Right. Initially, initially they will be uh, certainly allowed to continue their growth, development, and involvement as normal children. And, it's, it's just yeah. Yeah. So yeah. sorry, and and for those who weren't are just tuning in, uh, you say four to five to ten thousand year lifespan. It's not that one dies at the end, but then generally one moves on to five D. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, there's everything that they've told me in every word that they've used. They've been very clear about this. There is no death um, from the four, from the fourth dimension on upward. Now, it just doesn't exist. Right. So let's talk about kind of the senior citizens now. People who are senior citizens or senior senior citizens. 79, 80, 81, 82, 90 years old, and centenarians. There are a few, perhaps more now, centenarians. Uh, and those people who are on their deathbeds or on the verge of dying, that, that is, people are going through that process now and over this, this dimensional shift time. What happens to them in terms of their transformations? Sure. There, there are multiple answers to this question. Excuse me, so I'll take them one by one. The people that are in their 70s, 80s, older, that are healthy, they'll retain the knowledge and wisdom of their age, and they will transform into having new four-dimensional bodies. Um, for those people who are aware of their original spiritual birth essence, you know, where they, what planet they came from many years ago, thousands of years ago. For those who are, are aware of their soul and their spirit, the ones that are aware, they're going to be able to choose their original look, um, the look that they had when they were in their 50s or 60s, you know, whatever look they want. For those people that are aware, They'll probably most likely choose to be in their mid thirties, like everybody else. Uh, now that's that's one answer. Because, why like, can they do that? Yeah, like, why can they do that? Because young, like yippies, is that it? Or no, no, well, not 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 yippies, yuppies. Yuppies, yeah. Well, yeah. When yeah, when yeah, we were I mean, yuppies, are, yeah, are, absolutely. No, no, but I mean, are we going to have a fourth dimensional world full of yuppies in that that all kind of look wonderful? Is, is that what this is? Um, uh, yeah, I, um, she's, the answer is yes. Okay. The answer, the, an, the answer is decidedly yes. We're going to see a populace that as adults, they're primarily going to look like in their thirties. Right. But keep, keep in mind, this look is a look of choice because of spiritual awareness. I see. And when I when I say spiritual awareness, I'm being literal. I'm talking about people who are aware of their original spiritual birth essence, where they came from, the fact that they've lived many lifetimes, what they look like back then, these kinds of things. There are a few people on this planet who are aware of this kind of stuff. For the people who aren't aware of their original birth essence, the default transformation will be for the people in their 70s and 80s, they'll default to looking to about 
60 years old, but a very healthy, glowing 60. Give me now, an example of a person who is not aware, quote, not aware of their original spiritual birth essence, end of quote. Okay, What's an example. An example? Um, uh, because I was raised in this faith, I'll use it as an example. Um, I was raised uh, as a young boy in the Catholic religion. Okay. Uh, the Catholic religion has has some of its tenets. Um, the birth of a person, the fact that it it um, it can connect to God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Ghost. Right. When that person when that person dies. They, they either hang around in purgatory for a while till somebody figures out whether they're good enough to go up into heaven or they go to heaven right away or they go to hell. That, okay. That's one paradigm. Yeah. For, for, as an example, for people who are Catholic and people who are Christian that fall under that umbrella, most people who are still under that umbrella of belief and follow the beliefs of those faiths would not be likely aware of their original spur sorry of their original birth essence because the topic of original birth essence falls under the heading of reincarnation okay and that and that is about who were you when you were born um, two thousand years ago or four thousand years ago or six hundred years ago because that mode of consideration is uh, reincarnation is real. Most of us have come from likely other planets from around the galaxy, around the universe, and we come to Earth to choose to have a third dimensional life, to learn what we lean, need to learn. Those people are going to be the ones that will be most likely to be aware of their spiritual birth essence. The, the people who are Catholics and the broad range of people who are Christians, um, they're less likely to be aware of their original birth essence. How's that? Well, uh, there are going to be a lot of fundamentalist Christians that are going to be walking around looking like they're 60 years old then. I think so, yes. Yeah, uh, Yeah. you're probably right. Yeah, But that's, given the 60 they're describing, um, that's a pretty good looking 60. Yeah, These people, yeah. They said youthful, glowing, healthy, you know, um, yeah. glowing skin. I don't know about the hair color, but they they are they're gonna they're gonna be healthy sixty year olds for now, the people yeah go ahead I'm sorry no 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 nope. I, I I please you yeah I was just gonna say as a comparison the people on their deathbeds um kind of at the moment of death they're gonna have all sorts of choices because they're gonna be exactly at that moment of all right, I'm dying, this, thir this 3D body is dying, do I want to go to Earth? Do I want to reincarnate and become a baby again? Uh, do I want to go to another 3D world? Or, I'm all done. I've learned as much as I need to learn in the 3D realm, and I'm going to go to some other 4D planet and have some fun over there and learn a whole bunch of other different things. You know, the options are almost unlimited. Uh, unlimited. Now, you mentioned kind of the purgatory uh, realm. Uh, I, you know, uh, what happens if a person dies during this shift? You know, if the, if the 3D human body dies before they're... they're ah, in okay. Now, yeah, now I hear your question. Yeah. If, uh, let's say that uh, uh, a month from now, yeah. There, there's, there's uh, someone's kind old grandmother, uh, Emma, and Emma is 89 years old and she passes away. That's clearly well before the shift completely takes place. Um, she will go through, at least based on everything I've learned, she will go through the normal process of, okay, I'm here at a temporary transit place. Do I want to go back down to Earth as a baby and take on uh, a whole new third-dimensional life again? And, of course, becoming 40. <laughs> uh, do I want to go to an easier planet, another third-dimensional planet like Earth but different and have a different set of 3D lessons? 
am, am I done with Earth? Right. Do I want to go somewhere in, into the fourth dimensional realm? Um, it's a, this is, so the, the, this is really, this is really the process of choosing. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, Absolutely. Th this is, this is a comment that's, that just came into my mind and it, I've been thinking about it for a while and I, and I realized that we have limited time because we have a lot of things to cover. And, and I wonder if you could just cover this in a couple of minutes. I've been, uh, as part of a book that I'm writing now, on the dimensional ecology of the multiverse, I've been doing a tremendous amount of research, which is how I originally got into extraterrestrial studies and exopolitics in the, in the area of parapsychology, principally the interlife or the afterlife. And a lot of the scientific research in terms of that's gotten through hypnotic regression over 7,000 cases of hypnotic regression of memories of the soul memories of the interlife, they sound a lot like the transition to 4D. I mean, people there, when they're in reincarnating, they're really choosing, you know, which kind of life they want over here, over there, this D, that D. Uh, is this like basically we are all shifting up to, to what used to be the interlife or the afterlife and the whole business of dying is kind of done with? Mm, okay, boy. Uh, boy, that was a really light topical question you asked there, Upper. Yeah, just, <laughs> just a couple of minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I'll, yeah, give me 30 seconds, I'll give you a dissertation. Here we go. Okay. Um, I'll take them one at a time. Uh, if, I'll go forward, you know, three years in time. Let's say three years in time, we're all living fourth dimensional life. As an example, compared to current third dimensional life, fourth dimensional life has no death. Right. Okay, there are some nuances to this, uh, but I'm not even going to get into it. it. It just suffice it to say that the global standard is, or universal sta the universal standard is, there is no death from the fourth dimension on up. When you go to the fifth dimension, and we're going to cover this actually at the tail end of this conversation. Okay. But when yeah, when you go to the fifth dimension, it is simply a choice to move on. That's it. You're you're. It's a transition. It's like going from Ah, all right, metaphor. You're in grammar school. You've graduated the fourth grade, and it's time to go into the fifth grade. That's what it is. It's a graduation. You're choosing to graduate and go from one grade to the next. Uh, the nuance is that within each dimension, I've been told by the gang up on, in the Andromeda Council that there are 12 octaves or 12 levels of learning, if you will, in each dimension. 12 in the 4th, 12 in the 5th, 12 in the 6th. I'm not sure about beyond that. Um, life on Earth, 3D. What they've told me is, and there's all sorts of philosophy around it, but what they've told me is simply, these bodies that we occupy, these are three-dimensional uh, living uh, biological bodies that our true spiritual essence inhabits. And when we've had all the experiences that we need to have, the third D body dies, the three D body dies, and our original birth essence, our soul, goes to a temporary place. I call, I call it a transit station. I don't know what they call it. Okay. I call it a transit station. It is definitely out in space. It's in the blackness of space with all stars all around. And... Our original birth essence decides what it wants to do next. Okay. Do I go down to Earth again? Uh, do I have to? <laughs> do I want to go to another easier third dimensional world? Both include the process of incarnation in a physical 3D human form. Or have I learned as much as I want to? And I'm really ready. I'm really ready to, to, to live now in a fourth dimensional life form. 
and, and take on all the attributes of being a fourth dimensional being. So that, that's the best answer I can give you in the short time. <laughs> you oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Does, and, does that and, help? Uh, does that help? So, yeah, it sounds like this transformation to me, from a systems point of view, sounds like we're doing a transformation through dimensional shift from 3D to 4D. And before, we were caught in a reincarnation cycle in 3D. We would do 3D, we would die, we go to inner life in 4D, and then come back to right. 3, 3D. So it sounds right. like with the whole solar system shifting to 4D, we're just getting rid of what we used to call heaven, and our baseline is heaven, basically. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. We, okay. We, 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 end, we end the continual cycle of 3D life, birth, death. 3D yeah. life, birth, death. 3D life, birth, death. That cycle gets ended okay, through, through a natural evolution called the movement of our solar system into this new area of space called fourth dimensional energy. Uh, okay, great. That, that, yeah. is a, that is a huge, if, if and when that occurs... That is a huge evolutionary step. I mean, that is worthy of the 65 million and 265 million year cycles of when evolution spontaneously appears. <laughs> okay. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, yeah. uh, work and, and economy. Why don't we touch on those two, two subjects? What about work in 4D? Okay. Um, work. Yes. Uh, sorry, gang. People, yeah, you will continue to work. <laughs> but listen, you know, it's uh, we will. The process is going to be a lot easier. We're going to be able to choose on our own and follow a career path that is suited to, um, you know, his or her own strongest, unique gifts and abilities. Um, it's just uh, the only way I can tell you is the process is going to just be a lot, a lot easier. At around eight thousand years of life, you know, considering that ten thousand is the time that we move on to the fifth, roughly, um, and some people retire at around the six thousand year mark. They retire from their full time careers and they decide to pursue new, different interests that fascinate them. It's just that there's a lot greater freedom in the learning and working process in fourth dimensional life as compared to, to 3D. And again, keep in mind, I'm giving you approximations of Earth time so you get a sense of the length of time that, we'll, that we have in 4D life. Right. Now, uh, everybody's now talking, you know, with the with the expected breakdown, breakthrough of the global financial system and this kind of debt-based uh, economy, what, what about the economy in 4D? Goods and services, trade, you know, measure of value, that, that is, what is, is there an economy? Um, yes. Yes, but I'll, I'll, I'll break it down to its more basic uh, element, which is the one that we all think about the most. How are we going to pay rent, or how are we going to pay our mortgage, our light bills, uh, pay for food, etc., etc.? Right. Um, different answer altogether. Here's where there's a big change. People on virtually all worlds thriving and living in the fourth density throughout the universe. Universally, they have their basic needs taken care of. Food, housing, that kind of thing, taken care of. And, and money doesn't exist. I can't tell you how many times they've said, you're not going to need money. People don't get paid money. Um, the economic system of Earth is expected to evolve to a model completely that will be based on the pure trade. And when I'm saying trade, I mean literal. It's the old word, the old use of the word trade, you know, which is sort of like barter. It'll be an exchange process. And they've told me you can expect that it's going to take, because they can, they can easily look down the timeline. 
they said you can expect that it's going to take about 10 to 12 Earth, sorry, 10 to 12 years of current Earth time for our present broken economic system that's based on money to evolve to a new system that's based on trade, on the barter of goods and services. And they expect that many of the most forward-thinking people, um, futurists on this planet, will come together to form a formal advisory board to discuss the key aspects of, of this system. And expect there will also be regional advisory boards as well that combine to make up this, this greater advisory board to, to evolve the economic system on this planet. Yeah, I just want to jump in. Thank you. I just want sure. to jump in with uh, a comment here for those who may be watching. And this is a lot of information, and people are processing it in different ways. You know, some people want to know, some people are it's triggering them. I mean, money and sex are great triggers. So if, <laughs> if you're having a rough yeah. time, don't worry about it. But Sorry. I just wanted to, to say that. Uh, uh, basically, a memorandum that uh, Tolik has prepared, who again is a 20-year professional in the computer industry and ac accustomed to laying out factual scenarios in mem memorandum form. That is going to be part of the article in the examiner that accompanies this. So you'll have full reference to that if you're just worried about forgetting and taking notes and all of that. Now. Having said that, Tolik, what about the process of education? Um, everything that they've told me about fourth dimensional education within the context of fourth dimensional life tells me that they, uh, they take it very, very seriously. Uh, it formally starts, and this is going to be different for a lot of people, apparently it formally starts very early at age three, again this is an earth time reference, um, essentially the parents at that moment in time of three years old, if they're still around, will bring the child to the grandparents. I know a lot of parents will be happy to hear this, especially with a three-year-old. Uh, the first lesson the child has is to learn and appreciate, to learn to appreciate and live with all of nature. You know, animals, uh, the mountains, the streams, the rivers, the lakes, you know, just to appreciate the totality of nature. They refer to this as, as preschool, and each child will have about two years of this training. After that, uh, the child will begin more formal training of their natural men mental, uh, intellectual capabilities. Why is this important? Because in 4D life, each child will be born telepathic at birth. And therefore, they're going to be taught to understand the language of symbols. They'll have language training, then history, geography, biology, astronomy. And of course, uh, up in the higher grades, then they get uh, mathematics, engineering, astrophysics, star mapping. And for certain, um, I'll call it adept children, for those that have natural healing abilities, they'll be guided to explore those healing abilities. And in this context, healing is about energetic uh, energy, energetic sensing, and attunement of people's fourth dimensional bodies. Because keep in mind, they are much more energy and crystalline based. You know, we're no longer carbon based humans. Uh, by the time people are between the ages of 13 and 15, um, as teenagers, they pretty much intuitively figured out what their natural gifts are, what they're destined to do. And uh, depending on which strengths that they have, they'll go to an appropriate university. In terms of total education, uh, Earth, uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm try to do this in Earth terms. For what we would call combined grammar in high school, about 50 years. Another another 50 years of university training. Now keep I, in mind, keep yeah. in mind, we live till we're 
ten thousand years old till we move yeah. on to the fifth dimension. So, right. yeah, these years are, are relative to that that reference. Um, for people who want to be highly specialized, like at a master's or doctorate level, potentially between another fifty to a hundred years, depending on the person's specialization. So we're looking at potentially a total of 150 to 200 years of formal education. Now, as an example, the commander Well, Tolak, what about uh, the commander? Uh, I know that there's an example that you mentioned in our conversations about Z Zoltar. Uh, could you tell us about his level of education? Uh, as an example, because he's the commander of a starship, a whole biosphere, as an example, his education is very technical. And therefore, he's got about 300 years of total education. Uh, probably has a doctorate level. And that's this, this totality of, for, of, of, of formal education of roughly between 150 to 200 years. With him having 300 years, this it's typical as it regards education in a fourth dimensional life. These, so are, these, are, just, these are just standards that they shared with me. Yeah, so that the the profession of teacher seems to be a very would be a widely held profession here because so so much of the society is involved in 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 education at at all levels and so much emphasis is placed on it. So one is either going to be a teacher or a professor or an instructor or Something like that, right? I mean, they're, they're, right. They're, they're, they're just going to be, you know. There's that joke in California. Everybody's either seeing a therapist, studying to be a therapist, or is a therapist. <laughs> I haven't heard that, that in years. That's, yeah, that's an it. old joke. I mean, that's you know. good. That's good. Um, yeah, uh, th there are yeah. there are there are other individuals that I know of. Um, one is. Uh, an ambassador, actually, uh, the vice chairwoman, has been through at least two through two hundred years and more of education. Right. As, as as an ambassador, that's that's what she does when she's not chairing the meetings. So, yeah, education uh, seems to be very very important in the context of fourth dimensional life, and there's every opportunity made for people to explore who they are, what how they want to spend and express their lives within the totality of you know eight to ten thousand years before they move on to the fifth dimension. Now, j just to mention, uh, Zoltar is is like an ambassadorial name or rank, yeah, it's, and right, it's, it's because public, they have they they have private names. Absolutely, everybody everybody that I speak with, all five of them have a first name and last name just like you and I do. This is this is a public persona name. And they, they do this because they're working in space on this biosphere, which is a very public place. Biospheres are places where fourth dimensional, fifth dimensional, sixth dimensional people exist. There are a lot of formal council meetings. There are a lot of formal subcommittee meetings. There's a lot of formality. And... They keep their public lives public, having to do with work. And their pri private lives are private. Now, I kind of want to interject here because we, in part it's my fault, but we are uh, approaching, we, we have about 15 minutes left for the hour segment. Uh, and so we can extend for another 45 minutes. But it's my fault, but... I really want to speed this up and just ask, let's get into, <laughs> please excuse us. 
love and marriage and the baby carriage marriage sex and procreation sure um i'll take them pretty quickly what about marriage um they said that we expect that the norm uh, for people getting married again these are right now earth terms will be anywhere between 20 to 25 years old i don't know how to express it in 4d terms yet uh, but this is pretty typical on other planets um likely this would translate into maybe a thousand or fifteen hundred years old of 4D time. Some people can decide to get married later. Some people can decide not to get married at all. It's, you know, it's, it's all <laughs> up to individual choice. Um, love, sex, and marriage. What about sex? Sex, the act of sex itself will still be enjoyed the same way. Um, uh, men and women will still have the same physical reproductive organ, organs, all of their, the right parts in the right places in both men and women, and earth people will still be able to enjoy sex the same natural ways as they do now, but just not for the purpose of creating a baby. Now, I, I know that in this atmosphere people would say, well, what about lesbian, gay, and transgender sex? Have they talked about that? And quite honestly, I haven't asked. Okay, I, well, I, you, I, I just didn't you may ask. Want to ask. <laughs> I just didn't ask, and um, I, oh, I didn't. Oh. A, I didn't ask simply because I honestly didn't think of it. Yeah. Now, uh, also in a related question, uh, have you had any reactions as to what sexual mores are? I mean, here. In our 3D Earth, sexual mores vary a tremendous amount from kind of the the open sex uh, paradigm at one end to the other paradigm where under certain religious um, faiths and belief systems, for example, Islam and others, women and sex are highly regulated. Do we know anything about the 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 sexual mores in in the fourth dimensional Earth? Okay, um, this could take a long time, but I'll I'll give you uh, two examples, and I'll I'll be brief. Okay. I I, I had I got to understand. I not only have sessions like this with them where I've got all my questions lined up and I'm Mr. Detail. You know, it's like I'm in a business meeting. Questions, okay. questions, questions, and we're going through it. But we also have informal conversations. Yeah. And, and um, the, uh, the vice chairman, chairwoman was telling me one time about the, the pond, the lake that they have on board the biosphere oh. that, that they go swimming in. And wow. outside, you know, around around the pond and lake, there are some trees and there are some domesticated animals like uh, like deer kind of animals that just kind of yeah. wander around, nibble on the grass. But uh, during their off time, the, the crew members of the biosphere go to this lake and they swim. Yeah. Well, I was amazed to find out that they were swim. They had two completely separate parts of the beach. One side for men. And another side for women. Wow! And I went, huh? <laughs> I mean, you gotta be kidding me! No, no, no. We've been doing that way for years. So I said, hang on a minute. And so um, <laughs> we talked for a little while, and I basically suggested, you know, it's part of a normal teenage, at least within the context of the U.S. or Canada, yeah. it's part of normal socialization for teenage boys and teenage girls and certainly people in their 20s and 30s that when you're on the beach you 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 have families together single men and single women go to the beach together yeah. um people socialize yeah. and so as an experiment and it's it's working slowly but it's working people are coming together together on the same beach at the lake men and women men women and children all, all on the same beach together, collaboratively. <laughs> As an experiment, so it sounds like three D Earth is more evolved. I mean, part. I mean, we have a, a very famous wreck beach here in Vancouver. It's a world famous new oh, yeah. beach. I mean, like, wait a minute, something doesn't compute there. 
Well, I, but I'm not done. I'm yeah. not done. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, as a comparison, when I started to get into this conversation about um, you know, sex, love, marriage, procreation, um, their attitudes about sex are very healthy. Okay. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, sex is great. We love sex. It's a lot of fun. It's for the purpose of enjoyment. Okay. Do we do it? Yeah, as much as we can, but okay. we don't do it for the purpose of creating a baby. Oh. And I had most of my conversations were with her because I was learning about the process of procreation. Yeah. And, and she's like, no, but that's not how we create children. I'm like, no, you don't? No, 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 no. And, you know, okay. we'll, we'll get it. We'll, we're, we're certainly going to talk about that. So it's funny, you know, in some ways they are a little provincial in terms of what their norm on Tolek um, as a biosphere, because that's the, yeah. that, that particular biosphere, it's spelled differently, but that particular biosphere, that's how they conduct themselves at well, that yeah, um, may, maybe uh, life in in outer space where where you're on kind of war war duty, which they've been on. Maybe that's it's like a it's like a submarine where you know. I mean. Well, yeah, yeah, because they quite honestly they packed up they packed up that biosphere that ship yeah and they got here pretty quick because things were getting pretty difficult uh, in this war and they needed. Right. Reinforcements. They need more people. They need more ships. It was like pack the thing up, get out of Dodge yeah, yeah, quick. Yeah. Oh, okay, and, so and so right now you you really haven't gotten into the conversation about what the sexual mores are like on the home planets because you've got these planets with you know we're going to oh, yeah. have men, men are going to be seven feet tall, women are going to be six feet tall on on the four D Earth, according to the infra, you know what we were talking about in our last in right. our last interview. Let me just, in, in the interest of time, and people again can go to refer this in, in the article, what about the process of procreation? Okay. Um, as a fourth dimensional person, and, and this is, no, we're not talking about, we're not talking specifically about fourth dimensional earth people. We're talking about human fourth dimensional people, all human fourth dimensional people, not just earth people, all human fourth dimensional people. The process to create a new life form, a baby, is the following. And I'm just going to take this step by step. And it's, it's not by sex. Here's the process. A man and a woman first face each other. Uh, they, well, first of all, they're standing. Just assume that they're standing. They face each other to, if you will, very quietly get in sync with each other. Then they open each of what we know as chakras right. that run from the base to the, you know, the forehead chakras, uh, each using the total energies of their unique life force projected through each of their chakras so that the people basically sync up, they connect with each other all the way up through what we, I guess we would call the third eye chakra. That's, okay. Then each person would extend his and her arms outstretched to the other person, focusing on having his or her life force flow from each of them, and their palms would be open facing the other person. So left palm, right palm, with a space of, I guess, about eight inches between the two. And they'll need to do this with intent. They'll, they'll continually need to focus to create and bring to completion the formation of the, this new life form. <clears throat> These two people would see crystal-like, light blue energy sparks, much like you would see from you know, sparklers. We as kids use sparklers. Right. They would see these like little crystal blue s sparkles falling down like snowflakes, taking the form of a growing bright bluish ball of light. And this bluish ball of light eventually coalesces into the form of a newborn baby. But as a finished newborn child, it looks more like a child six months earth old, 
six months old of Earth time than it does a newborn. Newborn. Um, of course, during this whole process, instead of having your palms out left to right, as the ball of the child begins to form, each person will need to drop their palms down, sort of like in the shape of a bowl, so that they can hold this new essence of this child. And uh, of course, you know, the creation of life is is and a beautiful event, and the total time, once people sync up with each other, and they've got the life force energy flowing equally from one chakra to the next, the total time of focus to create a baby is 20 to 25 minutes. And they, they, they need to keep focus throughout this whole 20 to 25 minutes to have a completely formed, beautiful newborn child. And so... No mothers, you won't need to go through nine months of preparation. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's a complete, I was just, I was awestruck listening to this process and the way that she described this. Absolutely awestruck. Um, babies must have food, like we've talked about, and it'll likely be uh, liquid-based food with protein or fruit with protein to sustain them for about 10 years of what we would think to be Earth time. Uh, and that's kind of equivalent to when a, th a third dimensional ba human baby would stop breastfeeding. I'm just trying to give you an equivalation of, of when, they, when babies stop having to eat. Because once they become children, they become able to self sustain and self-generate energy without the need to eat food, just like adults. We won't need to eat food. We can eat it because we want to, and it's fun. Now, again, just mm -hmm. a brief question, and I hope it's just a minute or two. Do you have any information as to the legalities or regulations covering child creation? I mean, do you have to be married in order to create a baby? Or is that encouraged so that it comes uh, into a family um, structure? The, the question has two answers. Uh, a, am I aware of married, you know, as you and I use the term, yeah. and I'm not, talk, I'm not talking about uh, the state or a government sanctioning yeah. marriage. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about yeah. two people who love each other and get together. Right. It does the... Does the uh, that's the word I'm looking for. D d does the uh, that thing that we call marriage, that agreement called marriage, yeah. when two people come together, it exists. I know of a bunch of people on this primary biosphere okay. that are that are married, that have happily married lives. Okay. Um, I did not at all ask about any kind of government sanctioned state sanctioned institution legal institution called marriage i just didn't think to ask right i i just wondered since you can create a baby in you know 25 minutes uh is is this process i mean uh do people create babies at parties or, or, or do you have to be like in a <laughs> oh, relationship boy. because uh, this is like a real you know commitment but, once you bring a child in oh a absolutely but like I said and again I am I'm, I'm and I'm doing it happily but I'm sharing literal information that okay. I've learned and, and what they've said is the once people have synced up before they sync up they first have to look at each other honestly and say are we ready for this commitment do we is it time is it time for us to have a baby yeah so with with that as a supposition they go forward and say okay uh, okay we need to focus for at least 20 to 25 minutes of earth time and with conscious intent create this child well now that that sounds like people in 4D have a lot of natural gifts and abilities so, what are oh, yeah. some of the gifts and abilities that they have? Okay, this is this is actually um, a fun part. Um, I was astounded when I—I I mean, 
I, I'm always almost astounded when I learn these kinds of things, but I was absolutely astounded when I heard this information. Um, as I said earlier, 4D, fourth dimensional Earth people at birth will be natural telepaths. And telepathy, as an example, is the ability for people to communicate with one another, one person's mind to another person's mind, simply using the natural strength of each person's mind. Uh, spoken words, you know, using our vocal cords, like you and I, Alfred, are doing right now, yeah. it's, certainly, it's certainly possible, but it won't be necessary. And you know, please consider, please consider in the total context of this conversation that as you and I, and I think it's universally known by scientists that Earth people today only utilize about one-tenth of our total mind capacity. As a comparison, a 4D Earth human will be, vir sorry, will be utilizing virtually all of his or her total mind capacity during their normal day-to-day -day activities. Wow. Um, the, the, yeah, the power of the mind yeah, in the so. fourth dimension, very, very strong. Yeah. Very strong. Uh, right. So th those are all principles that we're, you know, beginning to explore in terms of thoughts or things. You create your own, your your own reality. All all those kind of things are kind of amped up in 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 a, in four D. What what are some of the other four uh, D gifts or traits? Yeah, um, I'll take them one by one. Levitation. Um, each person's ability to float, uh, another way to say this is to, to virtually walk on air, we won't need to touch the ground. Hmm. You can in getting around if you want to, but you won't need to. Um, another natural human trait as a fourth dimensional person is telekinesis. Hmm. The, yeah, the ability, to, the ability to lift objects and move them around with our minds. Uh, the last major one I can think of is teleportation. Wow. And, and we'll, we'll get into this in some more detail, but it's the ability to literally transport ourselves on our own without technology. Wow. You, yeah, we'll literally be able to think of where we want to go, and then we'll be able to go there instantly. And as a fourth-dimensional human... As, as we'll be emerging as fourth dimensional people on this planet, this ability of teleportation at this level of fourth dimensional life is limited, of, the transport is limited from one spot on the earth to another. So if you live in Vancouver and you want to go take a business trip to Paris, you right. think it, you think it, and you go. And the best, you know, we can, we can, any of us can watch, watch an expression of this. It, it's, it's a science fiction expression, but there was a movie sometime in the past couple of summers called with Jumper. And this, there were a couple of guys who just decided because they had the capability, they would jump from one place to the next. They went from Paris to Egypt, uh, wow. from Egypt to the North Pole. Um, it's, it's formally called teleportation. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just want to jump in here again with a footnote, which is not a question, so it doesn't need comment. But it's just also a, a reference to 3D science, uh, and that is that um, people can go to exopolitics.com or to projectpegasus.net. Uh, at exopolitics.com, I have a link called uh, Time Travel and Teleportation. And there are a whole series of, of articles there that are re research-based on uh, secret uh, Tesla-based quantum access, teleportation, and time travel that secret U.S. government projects have had for the last 40 years, uh, including a colleague of mine who I think you, you may know of, a Andrew Bashago, who as a childhood participant in 1971 in Pro DARPA's Project Pegasus reports that he routinely went to a forward time base um, 
in the year uh, 2045 to retrieve information and bring it back. And that teleportation was common then in what apparently was a 3D world, but uh, it was technological. So uh, we have that datum and we have the 4D, uh, the, the information being given by the Andromeda Council that are from 4D and 5D and, and so I just leave it to people to really listen to this information and then take responsibility for it and look at all the different uh, different data sources and research sources and kind of truth sources from your own gut. Right. Because uh, the process of transformation <clears throat> through dimensional shift appears to be a unique evolutionary process. And uh, all that we're saying is that look at this information. Okay, what 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 about uh, vision and hearing in 4D? The, these kind of senses. Sure, sure. I want to echo what you just said with a brief statement. Sure. I, I I highly recommend that you're welcome to listen to what I have to say and and take in this information. But absolutely, I echo what Al, Alfred just said. Do your own research. Absolutely, and and follow that intuition inside of you that says, this is real for me, this isn't, you know, make whatever decisions are appropriate for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to answer your question. Okay. Um, gifts of, of um, natural abilities uh, concerning uh, vision, hearing, the, the best way I can say it is that these will become more, much more acute. Uh, whether you're aware of something in the distance that you can see easily or you zoom in on it or whether you're aware of something that you're hearing the, the only way I can express it is that you'll be, have, be able to have the ability to zero in on a particular object or hear a particular sound simply by focusing just it, it, it will be these will be heightened senses and they'll be you'll just have greater acuity of each sense simply by focusing. That's the best way I can express it. Right. Um, now, again, coming back to some of the advanced gifts and abilities, we talked about teleportation before. Could you kind of get into, uh, let's say, that people who are more gifted uh, who are or who are on a kind of a faster track? Uh, what are some of those natural gifts and and uh, abilities in 4D that they have? Right, um, the, the people who have you know, I, I guess we use this term on Earth. We hear, oh, this child is really gifted. Well, the, the same kind of uh, this, the the use of those kinds of words can apply here as well um, for for people who are more gifted 4D humans regarding teleportation. Well, they have the ability, we will have the ability to go from like Vancouver to Dallas, Texas, or Dallas, Dallas Texas to New York City. So that's... You mean that this is not going through a teleport, but just by no, no. willing it? Yeah, yeah, this is natural. Yeah, this is this is natural. So, Sim so simply I, using so the ability of your mind. So if I want to go to and meet somebody in X Y Z, I I just kind of will it, and I'm there. Right. Exactly. Through the use of your mind. Okay. For the people that are, through the people that are more gifted, they'll also be able to teleport themselves long distance from Earth to another planet in Earth's solar system. Uh huh. The other, the limitation of a non-gifted person is you can, you can teleport without technology point to point on the planet's surface on Earth. For somebody that's more gifted, you can go to Mars or you can go to Venus or you can go to anywhere else inside the solar system. Now, what about, did you raise issues of privacy here? I mean, what if I said, well, you know, I'm going to teleport into somebody's house or whatever, into a meeting or whatever. Are there issues of privacy? And 
how to boundaries. Uh, how, to, how does that work? The um, the question is actually easily answered by the following. Um, as well as having uh, uh, counselors or advisors for people who are having a difficult time, somewhat of a challenge making an adjustment to having all of these new gifts and abilities, they're also going to simply provide, um, I don't know what word to use except for advisement. They're going to advise us what are the accepted norms for using these kinds of uh, gifts these natural gifts and abilities. They have accepted norms up on the biosphere that they need to follow, accepted societal norms, because all of the people have um, uh, have these skills. One example is telepathy. You can't be in a room and eavesdrop on somebody else's private conversation. Mm-hmm. The best, the best quali- qualifying way to express how it's similar to today's life is if you and I were sitting in a restaurant and having a conversation at a table across from each other, we might be able to hear and be aware of another seven to ten tables, all with conversations going on. But we would be appropriate and polite and not listen in on those conversations. We would pay attention to what I'm saying to you and you're saying to me. The same set of protocols and boundaries, this boundaries exist in the fourth dimension with telepathy. Okay. So the short version is they're going to help us with advisement as to how to get used to some of the, the new, these new abilities and the protocols that go with them. Now, one of the more intriguing abilities that, that I, you introduced, because I had an advanced copy of this, was that of transformation. Could, could you speak to that? Right. Again, now we're talking about people who are... Uh, gifted fourth dimensional people that are that you know pop in just like there are gifted third dimensional people we're, we're now talking about gifted fourth dimensional people so for gifted fourth dimensional people um, they're going to be able to change their physical appearance their look their height their color their sex everything about their appearance they can change their form at will and again not needing any any technology to do it simply by using their advanced fourth dimensional mind. Now, if one is either a female or a male in the 40 earth, does that mean that you can become the opposite gender or you just kind of put on a mask as the opposite gender? Hmm. Um... You know what? I, I honestly don't know. Okay. No, no, no that's yeah, fine. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I've never yeah, asked the question just, from that you know, perspective. Trying to, tr- trying to understand how the depth of the malleability of form, could yeah. I invent a form, you know, like walk, walk around and look like this work of art? Is that... <laughs> I, well, <laughs> no, um, I mean... you, know, you know, as an example, um, uh, you and I happen to be to use a, a ubiquitous expression, middle-aged white guys, right? So okay. um, we could, as fourth dimensional, as advanced fourth dimensional humans, we could choose to look um, eight foot five. We uh-huh. could choose. We could choose to have purple skin, okay. long red, long red nails, green eyes. I mean, yeah. if we want, if we wanted to create that for ourselves, right. Being an advanced fourth dimensional human, we could do that. Right. So there's a lot of opportunity for creativity, variety, uh, interchange. Life is life is a cabaret. Uh, well said. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, more like a smorgasbord. <laughs> a smorgasbord. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, and this is kind of... Uh, there's all this, you know, people say, well, we're moving up to 5D. No, we're moving to 4D. What are the differences uh, between, from what you've been told, people living in 4D life and people living in 5D life? You've said that, that our basic transition, our solar system is moving from 3D to 4D. What's the difference of 4D and 5D? 
Right, right. Before before I give you the uh, the chapter and verse answer, I'm, I'm going to give you and everybody else a metaphor first. Okay. And these are my own words, but I think it's a good metaphor. Imagine 3D life, imagine meaning in image 3D life as an example, as a hundred story building. Okay? And so throughout the course of our 3D lives, we climb from the first floor to the fifth, to the twelfth, to the twentieth, etc. etc. We finally get to the hundredth floor. And we go, okay, I'm now going to start living a fourth dimensional life. Well, as a comparison to get from the fourth dimension to some expressions of the fifth or fifth dimensional life, you only have to go another 12 floors. You're in the fourth dimension. You climb 12 floors, you get to the fifth. Right. You're in the fifth dimension. You climb 12 floors, you get to the sixth. Right. So I'm giving people this visual image because it 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 is about the best way that I can show them that the difference between third dimensional life, fourth, fifth, and sixth is huge. Okay. It, it's it's a it's a big it's it's a big shift. It's a big transformation of how do we express life. So that having been said, for fifth dimensional people, they're not that much more I don't know advanced than our fourth dimensional people. So here's, here's the chapter and verse answer. Yes, uh, people have asked about the fifth dimension. Keep in mind again that each density, each dimension has 12 octaves or 12 levels of learning. In octaves one through six of the fifth dimension, people have all the above listed traits that I just mentioned, you know, which include uh, telepathy, levitation, telekinesis, trans, uh, transformation, teleportation, right? They have all those. And they can function each on their own as an each, sorry, as an individual unique consciousness. That's octaves one through six in the fifth dimension. Just like any one person can. About halfway through the sixth octave, people attain the ability to join a group, like a, a group consciousness, if you will that has a specific particular area of interest if they want to. They don't have to. If they want to, they can. But they reach that ability about halfway through the sixth octave. Each person can do this at will and merge into what we on Earth call a soul group. And it's kind of like working a project. Uh, we work together for a while and we separate again when he or she wants to. Sort of like when we Earth humans get together and we work on a work project for the life cycle of a project, and then we separate again once the goals of the project have been accomplished. Well, a similar analogy can be drawn here as well. Um, as an example, maybe a group of people, I don't know, um, 11, 12, 13 of them, want to get together because they have... Uh, a real interest in, in botany and plant life on different worlds. Well, they can bring their soul essences together and they can travel to another world without technology to study that world's plants. And there are a whole bunch of other examples that you could use. You could study a particular species of deer, or a particular species of mammoths. I mean, uh, uh, there are all sorts of there are all sorts of, of, of expressions of what people might be interested in, but the big difference, the key difference, is that in 5D, people don't require ships or technology to travel from one galaxy to another. They can come together, create and perpetuate their own protective shielding without the need for technology. They can split apart go work on some little side projects, come back together again when they want to. Now, I know this is out, out there stuff, but this is consistent right. with all the other things. This is consistent with all, all the other things they told me. This is what fifth dimensional life is like once you hit the sixth octave and above. Right. Now, uh, 
we're coming to the end of, of this segment, but uh, and uh, I have two comments and and uh, rather one an observation and then kind of a question to you. Sure. And the observation is one that I raised in our prior interview, so I just want to raise it again for listeners, for viewers who may be just joining us. And that is that what you've described as fourth dimensional life and leading up to fifth dimensional life, and especially fourth dimensional life from the sixth octave above, is very similar to what I have been studying and researching and kind of integrating and synthesizing as part of a book that I'm working on called Dimensions, The Dimensional Ecology of the Multiverse. And what you're describing with all of the attributes and, you know, how people interact and even the question of soul groups sounds very much like uh, the afterlife or what they call the interlife, which is in between reincarnations back into 3D, kind of under our present system. So it looks like this transformation through dimensional shift is really a movement uh, that does away with one kind of the basement of the elevator, which is reincarnation into 3D life. And so that our new baseline will be what was formerly called the afterlife or the interlife. And that baseline is life in 4D. I just wanted to mention that as an observation. Uh, I, I think that's a good way to express it. Sure. That, that, given what you just said, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Now, now, the second thing that I want to mention, and we, we kind of ended our, our conversation in our previous discussion, uh, in our previous conversation around this, and that is that there's an enormous amount of information here on life as a 4D human. Now, there may be other sources, parallel sources, that talk about life as a 4D human. As I mentioned, you know, there are more than 7,000 cases of hypnotic aggression of soul memories that are very much like fourth dimensional life at the sixth octave. Um, but what you've presented is here is what what you've been told by a reported Galactic Governance Council called the Andromeda Council, and that this is kind of of a whole cloth, and that we just look at the information because other than this, than this communication at the present time, because we're in 3D and supposedly in transit, we don't have an independent way to verify this, or do we? Um, no, no, I, I don't. I presently don't. Yeah, um, you, yeah you're, you're very accurate. This is, and quite honestly, I, I certainly was not aware of this book that you've been writing, nor the depth to which you're going, and, and uh, just all the research. You know, it's, it's good that you have this information to sort of use as a, a measuring tool about the accuracy of right. sim simply the information that's being shared with me because I'm talking to five t five people at different points in time and have been doing so over, over the past year and I have one source of information, them, and compared to you, I haven't done any research in this area. You know, right. other, than other than globally knowing about the concept of re reincarnation, this is all information. This information, this detail that I've received, that I'm sharing with you and everybody else, this is specifically information that they've given me. And no, I don't have any way of verifying it yet. <laughs> oh, okay, fair. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair enough. Now, yep. uh, just in this last uh, minute or two, uh, could you tell people how they can get in touch with you and the information that you're gathering? from the reported Andromeda Council, and um, any any other insights and thoughts you'd like to leave our audience with? Sure. Uh, I will answer your, your question first. The best way to um, uh, the best way to learn and learn any, any more details about what we've talked about 
is for people to simply go to the Andromeda Council website. Um, there's information that's there that we haven't talked about here in other areas of what I've learned about. And in addition, on the last page, page five, there's a new fact page, frequently asked questions. And as questions come in, I provide the answers on the fact page. So I would encourage everybody to go to that fact page as much as you want. I update that thing at least once, sometimes twice a week. Um, okay. To to uh, to to provide uh, a wrap up, I would simply say uh, these are very very interesting times that we live in, <laughs> to say the least. least. These are very interesting times, very dynamic times. Um, I you know I I would ask everybody to simply. Um, treat each other better, treat your neighbors better, um, you know, love your family and your friends, and uh, you know, keep your minds, your hearts, your ears, your eyes wide open. Just pay attention to what's going on, watch trends, and if, if you like to do the research, research to your heart's content, because the more you learn, the, the more you can have a basis for understanding in terms of what Alfred and I are discussing or anybody else is discussing regarding all of this subject matter. So that's, that's about it. That's about it. Well, you know, we, we um, really thank you. And, and I want to kind of thank you again uh, for the work that you're doing because you're doing it as a volunteer. You have a day job, a very challenging day job, and you're handling many different uh dimensions and worlds at once and you're doing this entirely as a volunteer to bring this information and perspective to us so I want to thank you on behalf of all of us uh, for your work I will um, yeah th uh, thank you thank thanks for the uh, the recognition it's I'm quite honestly I'm humbled by this role I could I don't think I could have ever imagined a year or two years ago that I would be doing this or that I would have this knowledge. Um, so having this knowledge and being in this position, um, I'm simply trying to be the best person that I can, do my job to ask as many questions in as deep a, de deep a detail as possible and, and bring, um, I don't know, authenticity, uh, sincerity, and clarity to every topic that I address. I really feel responsible for the information, so I, I'm just one guy doing my best. That, that's all I'm doing. So thanks, thanks. in short, thanks for the recognition. I appreciate it. Certainly. We've, we've been with uh, Tolek, who is uh, a hu earthling human uh, representative of the reported Andromeda Council, a, uh, <clears throat> a galactic governance body uh, composed of different star systems, including, uh, as has been reported, um, the Galactic Federation of our own Milky Way galaxy. Um, I'm Alfred Weber. May you have a wonderful day. Thank you. <laughs>